Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to a section of the Iditarod Trail near Rainy Pass Lodge in the Alaska Range in the state of Alaska. The Happy River runs through a broad valley and its waters fill pockets of muskeg and small ponds. It is the first major valley just west of Denali National Park and is almost as pristine and wild as it. The famous Iditarod Trail runs through the two-mile-wide valley as it makes its way from Anchorage to Nome. The mountains here top out right at around 6,000 feet in elevation, with steep peaks giving way to sloping, lush valleys. The animals in this area are quintessential Alaska iconography, with caribou, moose, and doll sheep meandering meadows and gorging on greenery. To balance prey animals, predators like wolves, black bears, and brown bears patrol the prairies. The evergreens here include cedar, spruce, pine, fir, and hemlock with aspen, alder, and poplar trees dropping their leaves each fall, creating a colorful display. Willows, sedges, and grasses cover every space that trees do not, providing food and shelter for its denizens. On the afternoon of Sunday, June 27, 2010, 54-year-old geologist Robert Miller was exploring mineral locations for Mill Rock Exploration. He'd worked as a roofer only five years prior and wasn't afraid of sweating and taking risks. He was armed with a three fifty seven Magnum pistol and was not carrying bear spray. It was a nice day with temperatures reaching into the lower 50s and spattering rain interrupted the mostly clear skies. Spending the better part of the day looking at potential mineral deposits, one of his last remaining tasks was to carve out a helicopter landing spot for his extraction. Packing a small handsaw with him, Robert began falling bushes and dragging them out, creating a small clearing. The helicopter pilot agreed to contact him by radio when he was within five miles of Robert's reported location, so Robert rushed to complete the impromptu landing pad. Over the din of the saw ripping its path through limbs, Robert didn't hear the approach of an angry grizzly bear, if it made any noise at all. He noticed it when it was only a few yards from him, and it wasn't growling or snarling. The bear dashed for Robert and covered the 25 feet separating them in about one second. Robert had just enough time to pull out his 357 Magnum pistol from its holster and fired off a single shot in the bear's direction. He wasn't sure if he had hit it or not and immediately dropped onto his left side into the fetal position. Robert clasped his arms around his neck to protect it from the bear's claws and teeth. The grizzly wasn't convinced by Robert's acting job and bit onto his right arm repeatedly, puncturing it in several places. He felt the bear's teeth dig into the area around his funny bone at his elbow, but failed to see the humor. The popping of his bones told him that the bear had broken Robert's olecranon process during the 15-second attack. After the bear vented its fury on him, it wandered off into the brush. Robert was relieved at the relent of the bear's attack and pulled himself up to his knees. As soon as he glanced around, Robert spotted the bear, only 40 yards from him. At this point, Robert still held his pistol and managed to squeeze off two more shots before diving onto the ground once again. Given he is right-handed and his right arm bore the brunt of the damage during the bear attack, Robert was sure he had missed both shots. Robert dove face first into the dirt and placed his arms around his neck once again. He could feel the overwhelming pressure of the bear's teeth as they ripped through his flesh and bites placed all over his body. With adrenaline dulling the pain, he lay still and played dead as best he could. The bear swatted Robert and chewed on any part of the man's body that would fit in its mouth. After ripping at the man's flesh for several more seconds, the bear once again disappeared. This time Robert didn't move for several minutes, knowing the bear could be nearby watching him. His mind raced as he listened and hoped that the bear had gone for good this time. Unsure of where his pistol had gone and hoping he could find his radio, Robert peered through the corner of his eye, searching for the bear. After hearing nothing for several minutes, Robert tried to lift himself to his knees once again. His body didn't seem to respond to his commands, and he realized he was too severely injured to regain his feet. Searching his breast pocket, Robert found his radio. Holding his radio near his mouth, Robert pressed the button and stuttered, Mayday! Mayday! Hoping for a response. 
Every 20 seconds, he would repeat this call for help, but received no reply. After 20 minutes, a voice crackled over the radio. It was the helicopter pilot who was oblivious of the bear attack on Robert. The pilot was contacting Robert to let him know he was within five miles of the scientist's last reported location, as they had previously planned. Relaying the details of his altercation with the grizzly, Robert watched as the helicopter piloted the craft directly overhead. The helicopter then circled Robert's location in an increasing radius, searching for the bear's location. After determining the bear had fled the scene, the helicopter pilot informed Robert that he would be returning with a medic, and flew off. Ryan Campbell was in the next valley over, and was a wilderness-trained medic. The pilot contacted Campbell, and landed nearby to take him to Robert's location. Campbell was dropped off near Robert, and quickly rendered first aid to the injured man. The sensation of burning and electricity seared through Robert's body as an antiseptic was applied to his wounds just before they were bandaged. Campbell helped load Robert into the helicopter, and he was flown to the Rainy Pass Lodge a few miles from the attack site. Lodge owner Steve Perrins helped triage Robert alongside Campbell, and that is when the pain began to set in. Organizing a relay flight, Robert was flown to a nearby airstrip, where an emergency medical technician was waiting. The medical helicopter was better equipped to render first aid and departed to Providence, Alaska Medical Center in Anchorage while the crew worked to save Robert's life. Robert's left ear was stitched back onto his head and his other injuries were sutured shut after further cleaning. Rick Sinnott, an Alaska Department of Fish and Game biologist, stated that Robert was very lucky to have received the injuries he had, given they could have been much worse. He also relayed the fact that Robert's choice in firearms was inadequate to protect a person from an attacking bear. Sinnott concluded by saying that playing dead likely saved Robert's life. Following Robert's grizzly bear attack, Perrins returned to the area in search of the bear. His party could not find any evidence of the bear being wounded from any of the shots fired from Robert's three hundred fifty seven Magnum. It had clearly left the area and was likely uninjured. There was no indication of cubs being present at the attack site, and no action was planned against the bear. Robert expressed no animosity to the bear after his attack. He indicated that the bear was just doing what bears do, and that the incident was unfortunate. After reviewing the facts surrounding this episode, I'm left with a few questions for you. Do you think the bear was just as surprised as Robert at their close-range encounter? Do you think the bear creeped up on him while he was cutting limbs? Would bear spray have prevented this attack? Was this attack defensive or territorial? I'll be glad to read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness and is fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.